Hey everyone, Paul and Sam, welcome to another At The Bench update. So before we get going today, make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you click the little bell notifications, get notified of all our latest videos, click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. So it's been about two weeks since the last one. Every week, I think I'll do one every week. Before I know, especially at the minute, the time's just gone like that. It's gone. And I sit there thinking, it's been about a week since I did it. I'll do one tomorrow. And before I know it, it's two weeks. And that's literally what we've got now. So, um, busy two weeks. Um, Ultima is up the wall busy. We are very sorry for any delays. I keep saying this every week. We are. Hannah is working 10, 10 hours a day, seven days a week trying to get everything done uh i'm helping out as and when i can there's not enough room for both of us in there unfortunately we've got that much stock um so i've been helping do shop orders and things like that anything that helps hannah um along the way um i've been helping her with as and when i can so we are working through them we're 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 a week or so behind we are a little bit behind so we appreciate your patience we are getting through them as fast as we can um after the weekend, there'll be about up to 60, 70, 80 orders to be picked up. Um, Hannah's getting through 25, 30 orders a day. Um, it's manic. It really is manic. Online sales have gone crazy. I think it's just across the board. I've bought loads, which you're going to see in a minute as well. Um, so, yeah, we do appreciate everybody's patience. And just be aware, we're, we're not sitting back and relaxing. Hannah's working her backside off trying to get everything ready. And uh, like I said, we do appreciate everybody's patience. And just bear with us. We will get your stuff to you. I'm impatient with stuff like this as well. I want it yesterday when I order stuff. So I can totally understand anybody's frustration. But it's just gone off the charts busy. People staying at home. I've done it. Me and Hannah must have spent a fortune on Amazon. I've spent a fortune on uh, model kits. I've been buying stuff for me and James to play with. More watches because I'm nuts. Um, so, yeah. It's uh, whatever to relieve the boredom and while that stressor is, now, online, online retail is good for uh, a little bit of stress relief, um, and I've certainly been doing that lately. So, like I say, bear with us. Uh, ISM, uh, former Facebook, busy as ever, doing really well. Um, channel, channel's a bit quiet actually, the comments are quiet now. I'm not seeing a lot of you people out there that regularly comment, commenting, so I don't know if people are watching it on TVs and just not commenting. Uh, or if you're doing other things, I don't know. I really don't know. But it'd be nice to hear from you all. Uh, there's a few old names I've not seen out there for a while. Um, yeah, so it'd be nice to see out there as well. Um, whilst I'm on something as well, and I'm not staring in trouble, I'm making a point. Um, I made a video on my channel, my Paul ISM channel. Uh, if you go over to that, about somebody who begins a little bit of trouble. I made a video on it. He commented. Hopefully, we put it to bed. And he will now stop trolling us. Um, I seriously do. Because I don't want to have to go any more into this. And um, we just leave it as it is. Move on with our lives. So yeah. Just just bear that in mind. Um, I'm not trying to stir up trouble. I'm just making a point. So hopefully it's just been put to bed. If you want to watch it. If you want to run about it. It's on my Paul Isam channel. You can go over there. And have a watch of that. Um, but yeah. Hopefully it's put to bed. And we can put... Um, put a rest to it now because it's silly very very silly um yeah so that's uh so i've been busy um sorry i spotted a little bit of um algae on my bench i thought it was a shrimp it jumped out of the tank again they've got a habit of doing that every now and then because they're nuts um i forgot what i was gonna say then yeah i've been modeling on and off over the past couple of weeks um definitely getting back to more being myself i'm not gonna go all over it again that, those medication I got put on, they screwed with me really bad. Anxiety, I've never felt anything like it in my life. It's finally coming down, coping with it better and better as we go. And um, yeah, problem is, it, I'm knackered. After like 9 pm of a night, I'm done for the day. The problem is, as well, I'm coming out here earlier as well. I'm out here at 9 10 am. I used to come out about 11 ish. I used to sit in the house, chill a bit, watch a bit of TV. Because Hannah's coming out early to start work a bit early because we haven't got James to take to school. And so on and so forth. I'm out here early. So I'm out here early through the day. I think it's having a knock-on effect of night. But I want to stay up because all the guys are on late at night. So tonight, I'm going to make a concerted effort 
to stay up a bit later because I'm going to bed at like 10 o'clock watching a bit of YouTube and I'm falling asleep and having a crap night's sleep and waking up at half four in the morning. So I think tonight I'm going to try and stay up a bit later, do a bit more work um, and yeah, try and try try that. But yeah, the medication's not great. It really um, did screw with me but I'm starting to feel more like myself now which is a bit better and uh, a bit more relaxed as well. James is doing well. This is like our life story today. This is your life. James is doing well, like I say, buying all sorts to keep him entertained. Um, we're having great fun with our little mini rock crawlers. Um, such good fun. Uh, we bought a couple of FTX mini outbacks, little 124 for rock crawlers. Absolutely brilliant fun. I bought one. Um, we both loved it. We were both not arguing, but constantly want to go with it. So I bought him one as well. They were £80 each, so they weren't cheap. Um, but for a five-year-old, he can control this really well, and I'm quite proud of the way he's been driving it around. We made an obstacle course in the back garden. If I remember, I'll put the video on. I've got a little video over here. Uh, we made a little obstacle course around the garden as well, um, and oh, such good fun. Uh, with the great weather last week, we were out there most afternoons playing with them. But a bit of rain past few days. Today's going to be clear, so we're going to go out there again this afternoon. Um, and I've been trying to teach him how to shoot as well. I bought an air pistol. Uh, but a Virac HW45, one of my favourite air pistols. It's a little bit big for him, so I bought him an airsoft pistol, which turned out to be an utter load of rubbish. And the company I bought it from are not answering emails to return it, so I have to open a PayPal dispute. Which is going to be interesting because PayPal doesn't like firearms of any kind, whether it be imitation, plastic, real. So I don't know how that's going to pan out for the company selling them, but they did not send me emails, two emails, sorry, three emails, and a Facebook Messenger. So, yeah, I'm done some emails. What can I do? So, I'm looking to get him a bit more of a more handleable pistol for him. And low, low power, I think I have to be good for him because he does enjoy stuff like that. He's, he's a little kid, I'm the big kid. And uh, we've been having fun together lately. We really, really have. If not, he's been in here with me with the guys in the hangout and sitting on his iPad playing Minecraft and doing homework with me. So, it's just fine, balance everything at the minute. Uh, stay insane, keeping UMP going, keep the channel going, the Facebook page, James, me, Hannah, everywhere. And the days are going like that. It's going crazy, crazy busy. Um, what are we working on? Uh, I think I'd started the... Had I clear-coated the Pirelli last time? I think I have. I had. That is still there. I've not done any more work on it. If it was clear-coated in the last video, I can't remember. Um, it's in its case. It's, it's just been sat there. Um, because I started that Meng T72 and just couldn't put it down and finished it yesterday, I think it was. Yeah, yesterday. And couldn't put it down at all. Love building it, really enjoyed weathering it. Went completely to town weathering it just because four years since I built this piece of armour, I wanted to try all the different techniques I knew or had learned or read about. And I absolutely went to town on it and made a very, very battered T72. Not battered. Very heavily weathered T72. Some might not like it. I do. I think it's pretty cool. So we'll have a little chat in a minute. Um, so now that's out of the way, I'm weighing up my next piece of armour. Don't know where it's going to be. I need to do another video on the 307. And Barry, if you're watching, hello, mate. I need to finish off your Revo. I have not forgotten at all, mate. It is there. And I'm hoping to get that finished over the weekend and hopefully out in the post to you mid to late week next week, hopefully. And I'll send a DPD again, but you get it next day. So I haven't forgot about it yet. Just mad busy and just engrossed in that tank. Absolutely loved it. So that is my plan. Over the weekend, I'm going to do the Evo, finish that off. Then I'll probably start something new. I don't know what yet. I've got quite a bit of choices, you'll see in a minute. A uh, big piece of armour again. And then I'm going to go back to the 307, get another part of that out as well. So very, very busy at the minute. A little bit stressed over it all, but we're getting there. Um... Yeah, that's it. Everybody staying safe, staying at home. We're only going out for all we are going out for at the minute is because the storage unit to either drop off or pick up stock. Myself and Lee have invested so much money in UMP over the past couple of weeks, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, the amount of stock we've bought, um, it's taken over our house, the storage unit, there's tons there. Um, so that's the only trip me and Hannah are making at the minute. We're not going out for shopping, we don't need to. We've got a regular delivery shot slot every Sunday. Um, and the doctors every two week or two weeks I go for a blood test um, and that's it so I hope everybody else is doing the same and don't be getting lax on it now because the lockdown isn't looking like it's going to end but I think they're going to start de-restricting a little bit over the next well I don't think it should be for a while 
and I hope the government sticks by all this. I don't want to bang on about this because it's a bit of a negative subject, but I think we need to be on lockdown for quite some time, to be honest. I don't want to go out anywhere, and once the restrictions are lifted, I still ain't going out. Uh, so, yeah, we'll play that one by ear. Anyway, we've been doing live um, hangouts, not shows, the hangouts, when we can, on the channel. They're sporadic, they're just as and when. Um, as I said last night in a live show, I would love to say that, yeah, every day or every other day I'm going to go live at 10 a.m. or 3 p.m. or 8 p.m. I can't do it because I've got so many things on the go. Uh, obviously keeping me sane, James, Hannah, UMP, my modeling, spraying, making videos. I can't do that because I can't film and do a live. I can't concentrate on both. I'll end up either ruining the model I'm working on or completely ignoring the Hangouts. I can't do it when James is in here because he's like a chatterbox in the background. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a fine line. So if I find myself sat here thinking, right, I've got a couple of hours, that's what I do. So I'd love to have a set time. I can't do it. There's just no way around me able to do it. So I'm literally picking either morning, afternoon, evening, and we're going live for a couple of hours here and there. Uh, and away we go. They're proven successful. We've done quite a few over the last few weeks. And uh, yeah, it's good to see people in the live chat as well. And hopefully taking a bit of the, the bored amount of staying at home. We're well, lucky to have this hobby. I'll say that for one thing. Very, very lucky. Right, I've prattled on long enough. Let's have a little look at the T72. Now, I've got some pictures of it in progress. Whether I put them up, I don't know. We shall see. Because I can't remember where it was at. I think I just painted it last time and did a bench update. So, I chipped it. I, used, I found a picture of all the material that was used on the T72. So I think it was by Meng. I have the picture... If I remember, I'll put it up on screen. Um, and it shows the different materials where there's aluminium, where there's armor, you know, iron or steel, um, where there's uh, the anti-radiation coating, which assumes lead on them, uh, and where there's rubber. So it was a good indication of where and what to chip. So on the aluminium uh, areas, I used Vallejo silver, did some chipping, and on the iron or steel areas, I used Vallejo model color, German cam, black, brown. So I had some chipping in it. I chipped the hell out of it. I then broke it up with um, the original green. I painted the armour in. And then a different lighter green. So I had some highlighting areas as well. So that really started to bring it to life a little bit. I then went around with a pencil. Started to highlight some areas. Um, to give us a bit more depth and interest here and there. Um, it was pin washed. And... Um, I added, uh, let me see, so it was the pin wash I had originally, so it's like a dark brown black pin wash to all that highlighted areas. Um, what did we do then? We then went round and, let me think, we made our mud up. So with the mud, Timothy, Tim, Tim Ivers, who's on the live show with us, very kindly sent me some flocking. I think I actually sold it to Tim or gave her him ages ago. <laughs> uh, some flocking, different lengths, some gravel, dust, dirt, some plaster as well. Uh, and I made mud up the way I used to. I did have a bit of a stumbling on the live, one of the live hangouts, thinking, how the hell did I used to do this? Uh, so basically I used plaster, uh, a couple of different tones of pigments. So pigments, um, keep an eye out for these. Wink, wink. Um, added some different earth tones of pigments in there. Threw in a couple of different types of flock and then hit it with water and made it into a thick paste. And it was a trick I learned a long time ago from somebody I used to know. Um, it adds texture to the mud and my god it works really really well. If I've got a picture I'll stick it up now. This was it raw before it carried over the weather and it really adds depth to it. So rather than just look like splats you can actually see the grass in it, the texture, it's sticking out the sides. And it does add a lot of interest to it. So very very simple and really easy. Dries rock hard because it's plaster uh, and looks really good. So that was put in all the visible areas on the lower part of the hull. So splashes up the side where, you know, in my envisage has been through a ditch and it's caught on all the side skirts, up the front, up the back and flicked it up the back. Because tanks do flick crap all over the place. If they've been in convoy with another vehicle, they get covered in it. So that's how I did it. So with a tank, it's always going to be dirty at the bottom and work its way up. Uh, well, not always, but most of the time. Um... So we did that, that was left to dry, and then came in um, as it was drying and added some lighter pigments by sprinkling them over the top here and there. Um, and that gives a bit of depth to that then as well. Once that was fully dry, I came in 
um, with some LP75, it must be buff, thinned it highly, and we just sprayed it with the Apex 0.35 needle, 18 psi, along the edges, just to blend in some of the mud over the road wheels, uh, over the top of the hull as well, to add a dust effect. Now the problem with that is there's no going back from that because it's lacquer. You've got to be very careful, don't overdo it. So my advice would be spray a bit on, let it dry for five minutes, walk away, come back and keep looking. I went a little bit heavy in a few places on the mud, so luckily I could just put pigment back over. Um, but my advice is be just do a little bit, walk away, come back. And I think that could be said for a lot of weather and armour. Um, yes, yeah, so that was that. And then I came back with more pigments, just kept piling them up, layering them, adding more stuff. Came back in with that pencil, added more edges. It just gives depth. I'm not an expert on this, um, but you know, I know a few tricks. I've built armour for ages. Um, I don't think I'm too bad at building armour personally. I don't think I'm the best, and people are going to criticise me for what I've done, and I don't really care. Um, but I'm happy with it. I wanted a really heavy, heavy weathered tank. I've always wanted to build a T72 or a 55 or an 80, one of those variants of those tanks, and I've never built one. So I thought, if I'm going to do my first one, I'm going to throw everything at it. Uh, and then in, in subsequent builds, the next one won't be as heavily weathered. So that, that's my plan around it. Um, we then weathered up the MG, the turret. Um, that was about it. The tracks, I just used two different colours of pigment, sprinkled them on, hit them with UMP thinner with a pipette, put it on. That way you can get it all off if you wish, or you can just leave it in. There's no need to use these resins or whatever. They're permanent. There's no going back from them. A little bit of um, thinner will set the, the pigments in place pretty well. And then once that was dry, I used a pencil lead and highlighted the track treads uh, where they make contact with concrete or rust, uh, rust concrete or rocks, uh, what have you, and just added a little bit of depth to it. And um, that's basically it. Very happy with how it looks. Oh, I added some oil streaks as well. Oil stains on the uh, engine compartments at the back and on the fuel drums at the back, I used some um, oil wash I had made up uh, from Ableton Oils from years ago. Neat out the bottle, it's, it's about half mixed, about 50 50. So, not 50 50, but it's a pretty thick mixture out of the bottle. I, I purposely did it like that. So, where it was coming right out of the fuel drum, I did it thick and then I thinned it a little bit and just touch around the areas and it'll spread because it's thinner. And then did some streaks down that dried really well. And I thought, right, I want a really glossy look right in the center. So, I got some LP1 Tamiya. And just touched around it and that gives the indication of leakage where it's been leaking so it's still wet semi-wet and dries it streaks away so that's all down the back of the fuel tanks if you look on the top of the engine deck there are a few splodges with a few little drips away and did the same technique dark in the middle working its way around and the exhaust black pigments uh with some of the oil wash in there and just blended it all in and that basically is all i did to it and i think it looks pretty good i'm happy with it it's in the display case uh, again, the tricky thing with armour is you don't get much in a display case. And uh, that thing's pretty full already. We've got about three more cars on the top. One more there. Yeah, I've, not got, I've got room for about six more cars, I reckon. And no armour at all. So I think I'm going to have some shells for the armour and display cases or cars. I don't know. I'm, I'm in a real dilemma. I sold a load of kits off. There's a couple on eBay still, actually. Uh, I sold a few of the build kits off to make room, but it didn't really make a dent in them. There's so many in there. There's over 70 builds in there. Uh, just cars, never mind the bikes and what have you. So it's a bit of a pain in the backside. But anyway, I digress. Took me about two and a half weeks to build the T72. Fantastic kit. Went together. No issues at all. I've got one slight issue that I forgot to do. One of the fuel drums at the back on the right-hand side. I forgot to fill the hole. So I did fill it with mud, and then I noticed after filming the video, it had fell back out. It, in the pictures, it's there, and on the video, it fell out. So I just need to put a little bit of mud in there next time I mix them up. Uh, but yeah, I forgot to fill it, and I thought, should I fill it? It's all painted, and I thought, you know what, I'll just stick a blob of mud in there, and it did, but it fell out. So on the, on the pictures, you won't say, but on the turntable, you will, sadly. Um, but yeah, that's it. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, Dave Watt, bless him, bet me £10 I wouldn't finish it. And he said, if I did, he'd donate to Smalls for Heroes. So Dave messaged me yesterday with a screenshot of a £20 donation to Smalls for Heroes. So thank you, Dave. Absolutely fantastic. He probably did help spare me on. And what made me build this more than anything, and I said this last night, Luke Carswell, a good friend of ours, Black Rifle Model Works, 
finished a 35th scale Magak, and he's also responsible for one of my purchases as well. Uh, I saw his Magak and thought, you know what, I really fancy building a piece of modern armor. Now, I call modern anything post-World War II. To me, that's modern. Anything after 45 is modern. Um, well, technically, it probably should be 80 onwards, really. Um, but yeah, I thought, I thought I fancy building something a bit more modern. And I did. So thank you for the inspiration, Luke. Um, thank you for the uh, push along, Dave, as well. And uh, yeah, I'm quite um, not proud of myself, but yeah, quite happy that I managed to get another kit finished. Because if you followed me over the years, you know over the last three, four years, I've started so many aircraft and a few armor kits and just lost the will to live building them and stop building them halfway through. So it was good to get this finished. And like I say, two and a half weeks, very, very happy. I am being asked to do a video build now. I wouldn't hold your breath on that, but never say never. You never know. Um, but yeah, there we go. That's my T-72 from Meng. Highly recommend it. Uh, and you just wait to see what I've got next. Absolutely beautiful. So with that in mind, I've gone and spent a bit of money and bought some kits. I, I don't even want to think how much money I've spent over the last month, but it's ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous. So, first off in stock is uh, a UMP now. A couple of a few kits that UMP's got into. Blank plug, how, how dare he? Uh, we got the Shell BMW M6 GT3. This is a GT3. Uh, this is a commemorative edition, especially for the legendary team principal, Charlie Lamb. Uh, it's a beautiful scheme. There it is on the side. Lovely, lovely kit. I don't know if it's limited edition full stop, but. Nunu slash BMAC slash Aoshima has got a habit of making these kits and then stopping them. Um, so if you want one, grab them while you can. We've got about five or six in stock at UMP. I've not built one yet. I believe it's a good kit. I believe you've got to be careful with the fit on it, but it's a nice kit. We've got a few of those in stock. I, I wasn't going to have one because I've got two of them up there anyway. Uh, I've got the Italia Monza and the Falcon one up there. Um, and I thought, eh, I don't want another one. And I saw it was a Shell Helix scheme, and I thought, oh, yeah, I've got to get that. So I bought that. We've got those at UMP. Been after one of these for ages, but I knew mainly we're getting them. Audi RA from BMX Nunu. Lovely looking kit. I'm going to review that uh, either tomorrow or Monday. I know it's been reviewed, but you're going to get my take on it. We did have eight of these. I took one, and I don't think there's any left now. They've all gone. We're going to get a few more in. Uh, and again, looks a phenomenal kit. Loads of schemes out for that as well already. And the BMW there is as well. I've got a load. And as I said, me and Liam have invested loads of money in UMP lately. And we've really gone to town and bought a load of armour. Tamiya stuff. You can't go wrong, Tammy. It's simple armour. It's easy to build. And it's still a great kit. So we've got a load of 35th scale stuff. Go on the website and have a look. For me, I absolutely love Tamiya's 48th scale armour. It's got the Abrams. Um... And I've got the T55 as well. Lovely brand new tool kit. Might even have a review of that. I know there's more out there. But they're brilliant. They're such well detailed kits. Um, they are phenomenal. I also bought Meng's Yag Panther. I've got my battery life flash now. I'm going to have to hurry up. Meng's Yag Panther as well. Beautiful, beautiful kit. Really nice. We've got the Border Models Leopard A6, which I showed you the other day in a review. Lovely, lovely kit. We've got Tiger Hobbies uh, IDF Knack Magan, is it? Uh, again, stunning kit. The boxes of these, they weigh an absolute ton. Favourite box art ever. Uh, Mini Arts T55. I love that box art. It's stunning. The box weighs an absolute ton. So they're going to keep me busy for a while. Got Daswork Panther. Got that from a bargain, 25 euros from a Dutch site. Um, and what arrived today is Meng's Magak, which looks an absolutely stunning kit as well very happy with that and uh, i still got uh Ryfield's new challenger on the way and another mini art uh, t55 which i got for a bargain price as well so i got a bit mad by an armor even though i said i wouldn't we've got about 10 in the stash now uh, and it's going to be interesting i got to hurry up because my battery lights flashing or all my other batteries are dead um so yeah you're going to see some builds in the future that's for sure and uh yeah don't rule out a video build but don't hold your breath just yet we'll see so there we go. I'm going to have to rush along because this is going to die on me. So thanks for watching today. As always, check out and subscribe on the Facebook page and forum. My Paul ISM Facebook page for my personal modern work. UMPRetail.com where you can get all those Tamiya and new new kits from. We don't do men get. Um, check out the Live the Bench page and offer a hangout group for the Hangouts and Live show. And uh, please like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up and click that bell notification for all the, uh, the videos. 
And uh, yeah, leave a comment. I do read and reply to them all. I appreciate everybody that leaves a comment. It's a bit of a random waffle today. Oh yeah, I bought that as well. Five Colors Dust and Rust set because it's probably the best Dust and Rust set you can get in my opinion. Um, there we go. I'm all over the place today. It's one of those mornings. Um, but yeah, there we go. Stay safe, stay at home, stay modeling. Come join our Hangouts. Come join the Facebook page and forum if you're not on there. Like I say, leave a comment. I do reply and appreciate everybody. If you've not left a comment for a while, leave a comment and let me know you're still there. I'll catch you all next time. Take care, everybody. Bye. And breathe.